if you ask me what is the most important event in my career, it's here right now. This is the most important event in my career. So it's just listening to what's happening now. That's what's so important. When you're here, we are so lucky you're here now. Yeah. Have you played in the hall before? Gosh, um, you don't remember. Uh -huh. I couldn't see. I don't think I no, have. I, don't think either. I, I couldn't see it, you know, in my... No. Yeah. yeah, and it, it's pretty new, uh, this one. Yeah. yeah. The marimba yes. is facing this way. Yes. The vibraphone facing this way with yes. the two tam-tams. Yes, that's fine. And we also have some pictures. <laughs> yes, not so, very clear, but yeah, anyway, yeah. yes, it no, gives no, you an but idea. It gives, exactly, it gives yeah. a very fine idea about it. The, the only thing with Dream Machine yes. is that the vibraphone would need to be moved okay. uh, yes. to this side, but again, just where the temple blocks are. <laughs> things we were dished out. Okay, should we go and absolutely yeah more no precise problem. about all the, the stuff mechanics you need? Yes. yes. <laughs> Our next life will be on the flute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> about that. The piccolo. Yes. Yeah. Everything we do is a world premiere. Everything we do. So if I strike that drum in here right now at this moment in this room with you present, that's a world premiere. It's really interesting when you talk about space, um, because of course, when I walk into a room, um, I immediately, within you know, two, three seconds, I sort of woof, take a, a, a really, really quick sort of observation of the room, um, take a quick look at the size of the stage, the type of stage, the depth of the stage. Is it wooden? What kind of surface is it? And then how the, the seating is laid out as well. Is it raked? Is it flat? Are there balconies and so on? And then the type of ceiling as well and the type of walls. So all of that is done within seconds and it gives you a basic, basic idea because really for a musician the space is the instrument and these sort of things behind me are just tools. So it, it, it's, it's similar to a, a chef in a kitchen, you know, they may have their fish or their vegetables or potatoes or whatever it may be, um, and they're all laid out there. But ultimately, it's the feel of that kitchen that gives the inspiration uh, to that chef, along with their incredible imagination and so on. So really, what I do or try to do is to paint sound in this space. Now immediately you can see all of these prongs moving at the side there. They're still moving. They're still moving. They're still moving. Still moving. And this is where the room and your presence comes into play. You know what I mean? So we could easily have struck this instrument and made the assumption that, okay, after a little while, you no longer hear it, so we carry on with our interpretation. But actually, by drawing the eye into this, you're suddenly opening the room up and the weight of the room and bringing all of your senses, i.e. what you feel, 
through your hand, what you see through the eye, what you're paying attention to the room, your presence and so on, that really changes the interpretation and the experience of the instrument. Okay. And then the floor is yours. Okay. I'll keep it very short, really. <laughs> Just a little about yeah. how it came to be. Yeah. Um, I guess that... Working yeah. with Thomas, maybe some of the locations we went to. Yeah. Um, and he was mentioning that the challenge he had in making this kind of film was that basically you're making a film about something you can't see. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? You can't yeah. see no. sound yeah, yeah. necessarily, no. um, or vibration. Yes, you can have graphs and whatever, <laughs> but, and, and that was a, a, a bit of a challenge for him. Yeah, and I it understand took him a that. little while to grapple with it. Yeah. Um, the challenge Thomas had was that you can't really see sound, so how is he going to portray that through a film? Yes, uh, the first uh, uh, music room, McCartney. Oh, uh, okay. Yes. Oh, <laughs> uh, McCartney, oh, who? Who? <laughs> Paul, Paul was uh, here I've never last heard. week. Paul, Paul was here last week. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Ella, Clara. Wow. So who Jack chose Clark. the names? I did. You did? <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> Clara, that must be Clara Schumann, yeah. we think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Mm. Yep. yeah. Wonderful. Oh, here's your very lovely. Place. Well, I feel very, very privileged that you even thought about <laughs> I'm naming a room after me, but that's lovely. Wow, fantastic. We moved into this place, the Children's and Cultural Centre, five weeks ago. Oh, gosh. And uh, we chose to name the percussion room Evelyn oh. because we think you, Dame Evelyn Glenny, are, are a role model. You will, in June, receive the Leonard Stunning Music Prize 2023, and we look forward to celebrating this event with you also. How about that very, very first entry, digga, 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 whatever it is, what would happen if we used the shafts of the sticks? Mm -hmm. Or is that a ridiculous idea? No, not at all. Let's no, try. No, no. Let's try, and who knows? And if it doesn't work, I know it might mean more manipulating, and we may need a few goes to, to, to kind of work out what to do here. I don't know. I haven't played the piece, so I would just be <laughs> all flummoxed if it was me. But let's just see if there's any merit in the idea. Mm. So literally, we'll just play that digga 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 digga. And then we can use our, our, our normal sticks, if that's possible. It might be too, too quick a change there. I don't know. It's something you might need to just decide yourselves if, if this is going to work. Boom, boom, boom. So we don't have to really be met metronomic there yeah. unless the composer says to you, you need to be exact there. <laughs> so whilst they're not here, we can do anything we want. <laughs> no, that, that's not true. But anyway, but these are the kind of conversations you can have. And I know I've been in a, in a situation where I've taken some liberties in a piece of music and the composer said to me and asked me to just kind of adhere exactly to what was notated and that's fair enough otherwise i'd be forever taking liberties that's brilliant yes absolutely super and and again you know you can decide whether you want to sort of step back 
uh, during the solo or whether to become more and more intense because you've just suddenly got a bit of attitude in you and you've kind of said, right, I'm not doing this digga 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 anymore and I'm just going to go off in my, my own and explore the town or something, you know, in your own way. So you just suck it to us kind of thing. Give us this kind of real kind of da pa 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 It doesn't have to be in time. So although we've got these bars here and so on, unless the composer asks you to, well, you know, um, but really, I think you can just and you can just keep going, you know, until you get to the point where you have to marry up again. Brilliant. Any questions at all? No. There we go. Enough for a Sunday morning, isn't it? <laughs> Super. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Lovely. Brilliant. I started playing the piano when I was eight years old. So every Friday, the entire school had a music lesson. So by the time we left that school at the age of 11, 12, um, we could all read music. And then when I went to a larger secondary school, the ethos of that school was that every child has a story to tell. Now that's really quite powerful, actually. So they understood my passion of music and I was given that opportunity. So the whole of the new pupils got to see the school orchestra during one assembly. And that to me was a turning point. To see young people play as a collective, I watched them and I thought, I want to be in there. I want to be part of that. Exactly, yeah. thrown up the air and we'll see where we land. Yeah, yeah, I think you're more experienced at that than I am. But oh, I'll do where my you go? Best. Not at all. Not at all. Goodness, I'll pop my phone. Okay, out. see you. So I think my development came with realizing that I was comfortable being in my own company with the sound. And with that came exploration because you had time to digest. And I think this time, you know, is what we need because it isn't just the, the, the sound that, that we're connecting with, it's the journey of the sound. So it's the resonance of the sound. And then it's a decision of where and what you want to do with that sound. So how you connect then another sound. Just give a different balance. This is really nice for, as you say, for yeah, studio yeah. things. Warm down. Um, I'm, I'm always keen for people to, to find, you know, different ways of exploring that instrument. And usually my first question to um, other instrumentalists, I, I mean, recently I was uh, happened to be uh, playing with an orchestra in the US and there was a, a lovely uh, student who was allocated to sort of drive me around from the airport to the hall or, or in the, the hotel and whatever. And, uh, and he was a saxophonist. And I asked him, you know, where do you see the saxophone in 50 years time, in 100 years time? And he thought, oh gosh, I hadn't really thought about that. You know, can you see it being made of different materials? Um, can you see the keys being laid out differently? Can you see almost like a double saxophone with, with sort of two, two mouthpieces, you know, and you went from one to the other? I've got no idea. Um, but it just kind of got him thinking. And that's what's happening with the percussion world because we don't have the Stradivarius marimba, we don't have the Steinway vibraphone.
So it's really keeping that wonderful improvisatory curiosity, you name it, that children innately have and that we so quickly lose when we become older. And then sometimes it can be a real struggle as professional musicians to kind of, you know, find that, that sense of, of wonderment again. And that I think is what percussion does. It, it just keeps it, wow, that's amazing. And, and I love that. And, and I think that would keep me forever youthful for sure. Is there anything I can do? No, no, I don't think so. I mean, the only thing is maybe just before A, at the end of the tremolo, just give me a tiny more... Boom. P, yes. That might help the fractions, because then... That, that will really help, actually, if will that's it? possible. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm not a conductor. No, no, no. Because then... Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it just gives us an extra bit of pulse. Okay, but... indeed. Yeah. Thank you, everybody, for a great few days. Bravo, Evelyn. And it's a real, real honour for me. Thank you so much, and see you this evening. Super. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> deserve a beer at the end. <laughs> no, it's it's fun. That's the thing. It's fun in the end. <laughs> so, I really fun. How are we doing with the balance? I think it's good. I really think it's good. Okay. I think it's you are very clear, both orchestra and you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I yep. think it's have this um, the right sharpness. I think it's okay. right. Okay. Yeah, really think so. Yeah. Sam, he wrote the piece. Oh, sorry. Say hello to Sam. Oh, hi. Yeah. May I? That was absolutely <laughs> yeah. incredible. Honestly, that was amazing. Oh, thank you. Honestly, it's so beautiful. Say hello to the young people as well. Oh, yeah. So, hello. yeah. <laughs> Here's for Evelyn. Yeah. Oh, amazing. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. They're really. starstruck. Oh, I wish this was on the main stage, you know. Absolutely. This, this, this it's is a, really, it's a huge you know. stage. <laughs> and, and it begin down? Or yeah, how is it? It's, it's it starts when, when the audience is coming in. We have a samba group outside yes, in the yes. good weather, you know. Incredible. And there will be three small groups to create an atmosphere of so when, <laughs> when people are coming in, they, they ah, yeah. discover Absolutely. different. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah, so, so outside and also right uh, outside, when you have when you come in at the entrance, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, just when you come in, yeah. in. And up the up the stairs also up the stairs. Right?
Thank you so much. What an evening so far. Mm -hmm. The Leonie Sonning Music Prize 2023 is awarded with one million Danish kroner to the percussionist Dame Evelyn Glenny. <laughs> when you applied to the Royal Academy of Music in London, at first you didn't get admitted to the school. The argument they made was that you played well enough However, they told you a professional orchestra would never hire a deaf percussionist. But why in the world should I obtain a position in a symphony orchestra, you questioned. I want to be a solo percussionist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You argued, and at the end of the day, they accepted your argument, and you started your studies, and you became a solo percussion player. And the Royal Academy of Music has now changed the admission protocol. Today, everyone can be admitted to the academy if their performance is on a high enough level. Yeah. <laughs> And my aim is for the effects of this music prize to be felt by many through the work of my foundation, the Evelyn Glennie Foundation, whose mission is to teach the world to listen. And we may think that this moment is all about me, but in truth it is about us, the many people, past and present, who have played vital roles in this journey. And we know that nothing ever happens in isolation, and an engine cannot make a difference without other components being connected, and so it is with all of our journeys. And no individual is an ivory tower or an isolated island. A human being is one of the most collaborative species around, and the connections we make are vital to the enrichment of all our lives, and it's the good of all that we allow bridges and entry points to be accessible. And after all, it's not enough to create knowledge that exists only within ourselves, but to build on the mechanisms to transfer that knowledge out. Keep interrogating what progress means to you and the world we inhabit. Even when life at times seems a little challenging or we've come to a crossroads in our decision making or we may feel nothing is quite going our way, this is a chance to cultivate patience, resilience and belief in yourself. And this is progress. Give space and time the chance to be felt just as the musician gives space and time for a sound to be felt and I'd just like to thank you all for coming along this evening. It really does mean a lot. Thank you. Oh, dear, that will be you done with percussion for a little while. Oh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no, but no. good. Oh, good. Well, I'm really. Thank you. really. <laughs> oh, good oh, experience. <laughs> no, but thanks for everything. Really appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Oh, Jacob, you have to be here for. Evelyn, sådan i midten for. Ja, det er vi kommer i midten, og det er med med Søren måske. Vi får vi får bredere. Søren, du skal længere ind. Vi får bredere. Kan du se alle? Kan du se alle? Det er jo helt vildt. Det er 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 helt vildt
Garde, a romantic Danish composer. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was the first mm. first president of, of the academy. Okay. So yes. yeah, yeah. Before Carl Nielsen. Amazing. Lovely. And can I just ask to just get that in place that you had uh, your full hearing until the age of eight? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. And then uh, the and then it, it gradually began to deteriorate. And by the time I was sort of 10, 11 years old, I was then wearing hearing aids and dependent on hearing aids. Then when I got involved with percussion from the age of 12, which was when I moved to the, the comprehensive school, um, you know, I, I then discovered that, my gosh, this is a whole world of sound that I had not experienced before, which is the same for all percussionists, of course, you know. But it, the hearing aids were boosting the sound like a block, you know, so they weren't kind of uh, separating the sound at all. Mm -hmm. So things like triangles or symbols or glockenspiels was just this kind of crackle, you know, literally just this sort of noise that, that you couldn't decipher the pitch, you couldn't decipher texture, you couldn't decipher resonance, anything like that. Anyway, eventually uh, my teacher asked me to take the hearing aids out and that was when, obviously, all of that noise had disappeared. But when he asked me to just think about, well, is the body receiving the sound in any kind of way? That was a time when, well, actually, yes, you know, the body is experiencing that resonance of sound. <laughs> incredible it really really was the physical kind of element of that is unbelievable and the memory as well really gosh it, it, it's absolutely I'm not going to demonstrate this one that's for sure <laughs> oh that's incredible yes. this again this is a FF going right down to piano yeah. so what can we do to achieve that let's try something anything if these were hanging here, I think the first thing I would do is just literally <laughs> What is the pipe about, you know what I mean, in relation to what I've got in my hand, you know, is it something where <laughs> the first note is struck and wait, 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 and the just, like a just maybe a longer pause. I don't know. So this would be definitely a part where I would just sort of mull over, think, oh, you know, I'll try this, I'll try that. Oh, that doesn't work. Oh, that, that maybe that. Yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? That's really great. And this time, how about using the middle of the stick? So really? No, not really. No. How about up here? And I think it might also be a, a, a case of, of how it's kind of and then off you go. So you're really kind of absolutely your life depends on that belt. Oh no, not in that way. And then you, you focus, I don't know, to, to give the illusion. Brilliant, absolutely. So this is fantastic. You're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. I love it. Really, really. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well done. What was your first piece you commissioned? Ah, well, the very first piece, I do remember that because um, it was at the academy and uh, it was where every first year student um, could put their name on a list in order to play a concerto. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll pop my name on the list. And um, so I popped my name on the list. And then I was told that, well, actually, percussion wouldn't be included uh, as, as part of this uh, opportunity. So I said, well, why? And uh, they said, well, it's, it's not really likely for an orchestra to play a percussion concerto. 
So, you know, it's better for the student orchestra to have the experience of playing violin, piano, whatever, whatever it might be, uh, but not, not percussion. And I said, well, you have to make that clear in the instructions. You know, you said any first year student can put their name on. I wasn't very happy about that. And so I decided to commission a piece. So there was a, a lovely composer there called Kenneth Dempster, and he was a fellow Scot. And I said, Kenneth, would you write a concerto for me? And he said, oh, well, okay, yes, that will be interesting. So um, I went then to the principal's office, so probably walking into your office, right. and I said, I have commissioned a composer to write a concerto for this, uh, this, this possibility. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, well, uh, really? And I said, yes, because I've been told that percussion is not allowed. And I said, that's not acceptable. So, um, and he said, oh, okay. So he mulled this over and he said, well, that's, that's very interesting. We've never had percussion before, you know, in, in, in this uh, project. So, and I said, well, you will now, basically. <laughs> and uh, so Kenneth wrote this piece called Concerto Palindromos. And it was the first ever percussion concerto in the over 100 year history of the Academy. This is really lovely, absolutely. This is just super. And when we do have this uh, little, little, little um, comma there, just give yourself time to get that body in position mm -hmm. to, to start that. We've got time because we know the piece isn't ended. You're still concentrating. You know, you haven't finished it for us at all. So don't worry about just finishing that phrase and get yourself up. And then off we go. You're like a little wind up music box yeah. at the end here, which is, shall we just try from there? It's just beautiful. And then, oh, I don't want this to end. <laughs> Well, I mean, I think listening for me is, is the glue of society. I think it's, it's the kind of reverberation of the world, to be honest. Um, I, I feel that everything starts with listening and it ends with li listening quite literally. Mm -hmm. 